Hello, and welcome to video 6 of module 2. In this video, we're going to talk about creating a histogram for ungrouped data. Let's get started. In order to create a histogram for ungrouped data, we'll first have to make a frequency distribution. So if you want to review making a frequency distribution for ungrouped data, you can watch video 1 of module 2 by clicking on the link here. So what is a histogram? Well, a histogram is a bar graph in which there's no space given between the bars. Ideally, a histogram should be used for continuous or grouped data, but you can also make it for ungrouped data, which is what we're going to do in this video. In the next video, we'll make histograms for grouped data. Let's go over the steps for creating a histogram. To make a histogram, we'll need to follow six steps. The first step is to make a frequency distribution for the data. Now, sometimes you might be given a frequency distribution, so step one is already done. But if you haven't been given a frequency distribution, if you've just been given raw data, then you'll need to go through the steps for making a frequency distribution first. Once you've got a frequency distribution, then you want to determine an appropriate scale for the vertical axis and label it accordingly. This is going to be similar to when we made a vertical axis for a bar graph. Next, if your values do not begin at zero, then you want to insert a break in the horizontal axis, and we'll see that in the example that we do. Then we'll determine a scale for the horizontal axis based on our categories, based on the classes. And when we label the horizontal axis, we want to go one extra space. And when we create our histogram, you'll see why. Next, we're going to draw bars just like we did for a bar graph with a few amendments. First, the bars are going to be centered around the values that we've labeled, so the edges of the bars may not be on lines on our grid, they might be in between the lines. Also, we don't want to have any space in between each of our bars. So what that means is the right-hand side of the first bar is going to be the same as the left-hand side of the second bar. Again, we'll be able to see this when we work through an example. And the last step is to title the graph and make sure that you've labeled your vertical and horizontal axes with the appropriate units. In this example, the highway fuel economies for 15 mid-sized cars were recorded in August of 2015. We're going to make a histogram for these fuel economies. To give ourselves some space to graph, I'm going to shove this frequency distribution to the top of the screen. Let's go through each of the six steps for creating our histogram. The first step is to create a frequency distribution, which fortunately has already been done for us. If we were given the raw data first, then we would need to go through and make the frequency distribution before we can make our graph. The second step is to determine an appropriate scale for the vertical axis. Remember that we can do this by first seeking out the highest frequency. So if I look in the frequency row, the highest value I see is a three. So that means our vertical axis should go up to at least three. If I label each line going up one, two, three, I'm gonna have a lot of blank space at the top of my graph. So in order to fill up my graphing space, I'm gonna label every other line. So that essentially I'm counting by halves, but labeling by ones. So we'll have one, two, three, like that. Step three is to insert a break in the horizontal axis if necessary. You're going to need a break if your categories don't begin at or close to zero. In this case, our lowest category is 37. That's our lowest mileage here. And 37 is not very close to zero. So then I don't have to label all of the spaces from zero to 37 to indicate that there's no data there and I'm cutting the graph. The break is going to look a little bit like a heartbeat monitor. So there we go. Step four is to now label our horizontal axis. The way that we're going to label the horizontal axis for ungrouped data is just by labeling each of the categories like we would for a vertical axis. In this case, I'm going to start on the line after the break, and then I'm going to label each of the lines that follow in sequence. So I'm labeling the values from 37 all the way up to our last category of 49. Then, the directions told us that we needed to go one extra space. We'll see why this extra space is needed when we draw the bars of our histogram. On to step five. Step five is when we draw the bars of the histogram. The way that we're gonna do this is very similar to the bar graph, 
but there are a couple of alterations we need to make. So we're going to begin by looking at our first category, where the mileage was 37 and it had a frequency of 1. We're still going to draw the bar so that it has a height of 1, but instead of the bar like starting at 37, I want the bar to be centered at the 37. So watch carefully how I draw the top of the bar. So notice that this line is kind of hovering in the middle over the line for 37. Then I'm going to draw the lines down, connecting down on the left and the right. To draw the next bar, we need to draw the bar at 38 so that it has a frequency or a height of 2. However, I don't want there to be any space in between my bars. So the way that I like to do this is first I'm going to extend the right-hand side of my first bar up to the frequency of 2. Then I draw the line over so that it's halfway between the 38 and the 39, and then I draw the line down. And this is how we're going to draw each of the bars for our histogram. I recommend that you pause the video here and create the rest of the histogram on your own, and then when you've finished, unpause and you can check your work. Alright, so let's zip through drawing the rest of the bars. Now, at 45 and 46, there's a frequency of 0, so you have an option. You could just skip that space, but I like to draw a little horizontal line there so I don't forget that there's a bar there, and it helps me keep track of the left and right hand sides of each of the bars as I move along. Great, so now we're almost done. We just have one more step to complete. Now on to step six. You can really do step six at any point, but I always like to check to make sure at the end that I've got everything, so this is a good point to do it. We wanna make sure that our graph has a title and labels of units on its axes. Because these were the fuel economies for some mid-sized cars in 2015, my title should reflect that information. So I'm going to call this Highway Fuel Economy of Mid-Sized Cars. On the vertical axis, we recorded the frequencies, so we want to label frequency. And the horizontal axis was our fuel economy, which is measured in miles per gallon, so we should label it accordingly. And that's it, our histogram is complete. As a follow-up question to creating a histogram, what's the shape of the graph that we just made? Remember that there are five shapes that we discussed in a previous video. They were approximately symmetric, skewed left, skewed right, bimodal, or uniform. Okay, so what I notice about this graph is that the bars, first and foremost, are not all about the same height. They're not all the same height, so we can immediately rule out uniform. Also, there don't seem to be two separate clusters. We don't have two really tall bars with their own little groupings around them, so we can also rule out bimodal. That's going to leave us with approximately symmetric, skewed left, or skewed right. To determine which of the three it is, we can look at the tails to the left and to the right of that tall bar at 39. The tail to the left of 39 is composed of just two bars, whereas the tail to the right of 39 has many more bars. So we have many more bars to the right of the tall bar than we do to the left. This means that the tail on the right is longer, and so our distribution is skewed right. This concludes our video about histograms for ungrouped data. To see a video about histograms for grouped data, click on the arrow to the right. If you'd like to review the previous video about bar graphs and Pareto charts, you can click on the arrow to the left. Thanks for watching and have a marvelous day.